Well, hello everyone. So this is the next topic for uh, chapter six, uh, which is about natural base exponential functions, okay? So we already know exponential functions as two parts, right? Uh, exponential decay and exponential growth, okay? All of which the base is a number, okay? Now this one, we're gonna be using a base which is like a special number, okay? Which is what you call the natural base E. Okay, so uh, this natural base E is kind of like the same thing as the one that you learned in math uh, before, which is like special, it's like a special number like pi and the uh, i. It's like a small i and the uh, i, okay, the one that we learned last time, okay. It's also an irrational number. There's no fraction that would like uh, express this as a, because uh, it's not like an never ending number too, okay. So oh, it's given, uh, it's defined to be an expression given below. Okay, so that expression would be um, e, which is equal to one plus one over x raised to the x as x approaches infinity. So as x gets bigger, okay, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay. Now, if this one, if I substitute that value, it approaches the value e. And numerically, this is, equal to 2.78718281828 for 6 and so on okay now this is otherwise known as Euler's number uh, and some people pronounce it as Euler's but uh, for I think it's Euler's okay now since it's also a base this means that you can use laws of exponents in simplifying natural base expressions okay so like say for example e to the fifth times e to the fourth just simply add them so e to the five plus four that gives you e to the ninth okay uh, um you have 16 e to the fifth divided by four e to the fourth we just also simplify that 16 divided by four is four and e to the fifth e to the four that gives you e and the last one okay if you have three e negative to the four x squared so if you simplify that, you can distribute the square to each. And that gives you 9e to the negative 8x. Make 8x positive, just simply bring it down, okay? So generally, the graph of a natural base function is the same thing as either a growth or decay, okay? So it depends upon what uh, your value of a and what value of your r is, okay? So again, for it to become an exponential growth, both a and r should be positive, okay? The exponent should be positive and a should be positive. And exponential decay, a is positive and r is negative, okay? So same thing, okay? So the graph would somehow look like this, okay? So this one is an example of exponential growth whose base is e, and this one is an exponential decay whose base is e, okay? Still, it follows the same property. They all go through zero, one. Okay, so example, tell whether the function represents exponential growth or exponential decay, then you graph the function. You can graph the function using decimals, okay? So if you want, you can just simply type it in and then you can identify whether it's exponential decay or growth, okay? So say you have two examples, 3ey equals 3e to the x and y equals e to the negative 0.5x, okay? So first one, it's exponential growth, because you know that the exponent of e is one, while the exponent of the second one, which is negative, so this is exponential decay, okay? So one important uh, um, application of exponential growth or decay, which that has a base of e, okay? usually is what we call a compound interest that is done continuously. So it goes on and on and on, okay? So generally the formula for compound interest is this one, kind of like similar, right? So A equals P, one plus R over N raised to the NT, okay? So principal, rate of interest, uh, number of uh, compounding um, periods, and the time, okay? You know already this, right? We learned that the last time. However, okay, if it's continuously compounding, this now changes. The whole thing changes. Because notice, 
we let n increase and it turns out to be this one okay so e the whole parenthesis turns out to be e okay let's have an example so that's one from the book okay so it's r in x principle r is the annual interest rate expressed as a decimal okay so let's have a word problem you and your friend have accounts that earn annual interest compounded continuously so this is your account it has this formula 4500 e raised to the point 0, 4 t next one your friend's account it's expressed in terms of a graph okay so based from this okay we answer two questions first question which account has a greater principal is it you or your friend and then after 10, 10 years, which has a greater balance? Is it you or your friend? Okay, let's answer this. Okay, let's go back to your equations and uh, your friend's graph. Okay, so for um, principal, yours is when t is 0. So this t is 0, e to the 0 is 1. 1 times 4,500 is 4,500. So that's, that's the... Uh, base up uh, base money that you have while looking at your graph for your friend when X is zero look at the arrow it starts at 4,000 right so basically your principal you have a bigger principal in the beginning okay than your friend and let's look after what the money is after 10 years so basically after t equals 10 substitute that and use a calculator this is what you're going to get, 6,713.21. Now, looking at your friend, when the year is 10, so which is like this, you follow my arrow, it goes up, so it's kind of like this. It's way above 7,000, so it's kind of like about 7,200, okay? Or in this case, 7,250. So notice, after 10 years, your friend has a greater money than you, even though you started bigger than your friend. Okay? So this is just one application. Okay? So your online classwork, okay, it's already in Big Ideas. It's just 15 questions. Okay? Again, the due date is Saturday, May 23rd. Okay? So if you don't have any questions, um, you can go to tutoring, okay? I already posted the, the schedule for your tutoring. You can, I can help you there. And that's it.